Thank you, Leo, and thank you, everyone, uh, coming to listen to me. And, and uh, uh, you reminded me about uh, usually I don't look back that much. <laughs> and and then sometimes the people uh, misunderstood me that you forgot where you come from. Not necessarily, because too much I had to look at. And, and uh, one thing you reminded me about uh, when I was in, in a hospital in New York, in uh, Columbia University Hospital, and when I woke up from after the surgery, and the first uh, set of flower was from uh, uh, Albert Shankar. And I remember that so very clearly, although at that time I did not speak a word of English. <laughs> the, the interpreter told me all this. So anyway, it's, uh, it, uh, thank you, thank you, Leo, to organize this, uh, this event. And then I, um, lately I am a kind of a, um, uh, very eager and more than eager to share what I have seen and what we have experienced in our work in the labor, uh, the emerging labor movement in China, and uh, uh, and and also I want to uh, the, the, these uh, new uh, experiences and information is uh, seems uh, controversial with uh, some of our traditional thought. So if you find something, what I'm going to say is really controversial to what you, when you came in, is different than what you thought. And please uh, 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 be uh, provocative. <laughs> uh, uh, raise as many questions as possible, especially uh, you two, and welcome any uh, as provocative as possible. <laughs> so. Um, this is uh, 2005. We at China Labor Bulletin we started this uh, program. We call it a uh, 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 kind of bargaining approach instead of a freedom association. We know that freedom association to labor movement is the core. Without freedom association, without trade union, strong trade union, how can you bargain? This is the traditional wisdom. It's the truth. But in the same time. Freedom Association in China is a politically red area and no one enters. But in the same time, workers need help. The labor relation is getting worse and worse and more and more con 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 controversial and confrontational. And how we can find a solution, even without Freedom Association, there must be a solution. And especially after many years, we uh, thank you. Uh, we 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 uh, uh, several years uh, uh, we work on uh, try to represent uh, workers, uh, help the workers to uh, put their cases in in court, and to uh, either you have an injury or health condition from work or unfair layoff and no compensation, and then we try to. Uh, uh, you know, we call it a labor rights uh, litigation program. That's much earlier, so 2002, 2003 we started. And we realized that it's not possible if someone, if 20 people like me running around the world raise, uh, raise money for Chinese workers to hire uh, lawyers and to, 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 to do these lawsuits, it's not possible to compete with the speed that these cases are created. On the floor, and what is the solution? Kind of bargaining, and if you have a bargaining system, many of these violations will not happen. So you save court, uh, the, the judicial resource, and also the long process, and uh, the, 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 all these uh, things. So we start this as uh, as uh, uh, this is the background. So we believe it will, of course, reduce labor rights uh, violation and. More importantly, to create a win-win-win uh, situation, which is uh, the, the the workers will have better rights, and employers will have a, a less turnover in their workplace, and the government will have a, a more stable, uh, uh, I mean, social and politically. So, um, but the, the thing is, the world has its own impression on the Chinese workers, which is true, the last 35 years of what the role we played. And look at the, the, the collective bargaining situation in this country and in Europe. 
Yes, and some people blame the union, some people blame whatever, the media or employer. But I have to admit, the Chinese workers on the other side of the Pacific played very important role in this because we are cheap. Most importantly, we have no rights. So that's the background. And that kind of a force played this negative impact affect the whole world and 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 uh, so that's a uh, that, that it's it's nothing wrong if people have this impression that you know chinese workers are being exploited economically and uh, you know uh, this uh, this dictatorship regime and you don't have freedom association and uh, at the end you're helpless you're hopeless and that affect the whole international labor movement how can we deal with this there's a black hole sucking everything in and we are just at the edge of the black hole and we i mean from you guys from international labor movement also feel the kind of a, a, a hopeless situation not only you feel the chinese workers are hopeless and helpless but you yourself too so this folks come a chain suicide case that really make this image of Chinese workers as victims stronger, much stronger than before. And we do receive a lot of sympathetic, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, support and, uh, you know, uh, media reports with things and the pro protests. But, but the thing is, this sympathy, I remember when I was released from prison, I, I don't like that word when I was walking the streets in Beijing and people say, we have great sympathy on what you have I don't feel, and I thank you, but the, being in this position, other people only have this sympathetic feeling on you, make you feel weak, make you feel like you, you are helpless, and you're, you're only in a weak and hopeless position, so I don't like that. So now the situation has changed. And how we fight back, this is in 2010, the, many of you know this case. So it's a, a Honda uh, car park factory and, and the workers uh, really uh, spontaneously, some few work workers and two or three, they just unplug the, the what do you call that? Plug, the plug. <laughs> There's no electricity anymore. You say, enough. We, we receive too low wage, and Honda makes huge amounts of uh, uh, money. So we need a raise. So that's uh, 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 the, the, the picture. And uh, look at the yellow hat. Uh, either you're union people or not union people in this room. And, and uh, oh, yes, the white, the other side, the white uniform, of course, workers. And what's the yellow hat, people? Can anyone <laughs> guess? It's from ACFTU, the official trade union. It's the worst color as a union you can choose <laughs> to appear in front of this. And, and uh, you, it's the color that any union try to escape, but they just wear that thing. And that shows how l l less understanding about what the union is supposed to be. So this is, uh, but at, at, at the end, this case was uh, settled by some uh, famous labor scholar. And they came in and they helped the workers and the management settle down. I think, if I remember correctly, the 32% raise salary. It's a dramatic. You think it's a dramatic, but to me, it reflects how low it was. <laughs> so the company was able to do it, but without workers taking this action, they wouldn't do it. So that was a victory. And the, the, the unique thing from this case was the government, the local government, the first time ever, they did not send the police there to crack down at the first time. And they waited. And they waited. For some reason, I don't know. Maybe some of them, they are being lazy. And just, uh, you know, in history, there are many coincidences like that. Uh, uh, for whatever the reason, they did not send the police at the first day. And that gives more, you know, strength 
to the workers. And the workers did not do anything damage. Maybe the second day, the government think, ah, oh, if we don't send the police there, maybe there is nothing going to happen terribly. Let's wait. And the second day, nothing happened. And the third day, nothing happened. They decided not to send the police. And later they, they did, but outside of the factory, they did not go beat up the workers. So the both side effort, coincidentally or by plan, it results as this uh, uh, milestone case, and that government does not need to, does not have to send the police to beat up workers every time they go on strike. And the workers don't need to be that much afraid of the government, therefore. So this is the first time ever the, uh, the collective bargaining case engaged in China. It's a, a citizen watch factory. They, the, it's, it's the, the management uh, decided uh, somehow every day the workers own them 40 minutes work free of charge. Because you go to toilet, you drink water, you have lunch. They did not, you did not work. So therefore, every, everyone worked 40 minutes extra without pay every day. At this point, the workers, they fed up with this for whatever the reason, I don't know. But they decided to go on strike to claim the last six years every day 40 minutes as overtime. And they went on strike because there's no bargaining mechanism and the only thing they can do to, 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 to express their, their grievance is strike, it's stop working, natural. And the employer did not know how to, do, how to deal with it. They disagree, of course. And the local government sent in about 200 people. Uh, the local government office were empty for one week or two. All of them came to this one factory. And it's about 100, uh, 1,000 workers in this factory. And 200 uh, government employees came. One government employee in charge five. Sit there in your workplace. If you don't work, I don't care, but you just sit there. That doesn't help to solve the problem. Uh, you just uh, keep it on and on without a solution. At some point, some workers in this uh, factory uh, called the labor law firm in, this is in Shenzhen, by the way, in Guangdong province, and the labor law firm, they uh, asked for help because this labor law firm had this, uh, policy, internal policy, which is uh, whenever there is a labor dispute, no matter how much employer will pay them, they will never represent the employer. And they will only represent employee in the labor dispute. So they call them and the lawyers step in and help them to do uh, did the election for representatives. Election without a uh, standard process, it's, it's, it's common sense, <laughs> democracy, democratic process. And uh, they uh, wrote a lawyer's letter to the headquarter of Citizen Watch in Tokyo. Next day, Citizen Watch from Tokyo flew in three senior managers, sit down with this representative group, start a bargaining. And that's the bargaining table. On that side, you see the red shirt guy, that's the lawyer. And the four, Behind is uh, the elected workers' representatives. And the one on the table, the, 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 the light green uh, jacket, that's the head, the chief bargaining representative. So it's more or less uh, as a bargaining thing. And finally, it settled. It settled as, uh, with a discount. And the workers agreed, say, 70% of the total since it's six years. And the company said, we don't have that much cash. So, okay, 70%, four times payments. And it's settled. Most importantly, compare this case with the earlier Hongda case. The Hongda case was settled by some outsiders, mediators, put it that way. Workers did not bargain on a table, but they create this pressure on strike. But this case, is workers bargained and settled with an agreement. Both sides signed. That's the first time ever 
the, 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 the collective bargaining and the state media reported that as a very positive case, as a possible way out for, uh, uh, to, dis, uh, to, to resolve the, the dispute. So after that case, the Shenzhen ACFTU, the official union, feel big pressure. They had nothing to do with this case, create the case. They had nothing to do to help the workers during the strike and help the government. Huh? They had nothing to do to settle it down. So they feel big pressure. And they start something else. They step into this strike. They help to settle this strike. That's uh, well, six, seven months after the other one, the Citizen Watch. And they made it one step forward. They want to compete with that law firm. And we do better than you, because we're a union, right? So they did a democratic union election. They call it a direct election. And the important thing is this election was high profile. And during the election, this is the election, this is the official media reports. And it's on the newspaper. And he said, uh, the, 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 the deputy chair of the Shenzhen Trade Union gave interview and saying, ah, oh, it's nothing new. The union is supposed to be elected democratically by workers, and the, the union is belong to workers. So that's nothing new. Don't make a big <laughs> drama out of that. So that's what he, he commented. And, 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 and so after that, you have a huge, that, that made a huge psychological impact on workers, which is, oh, union has nothing sensitive. And the government, too, further downgraded the sensitivity, the level, level of sensitivity of, uh, of trade union. So that's uh, uh, Nokia. Uh, factory strike uh, when uh, Microsoft about the, the bigger percentage of Nokia, the cell phone business, and the workers were on strike. And, and, and this is the Nokia strike too, part of it. You see the police officer taking a camera. Huh? And you see the workers <laughs> taking picture too. <laughs> So that's it's, the important thing is fear. If you have fear, both sides, 